Hello and welcome to this video looking at the installation of the EcoFlow power system on our XS11 catamaran. We're going to look at why we chose the EcoFlow infrastructure, how we did the install, look at the system in use and look at the innovative alternator charger DC hub. We bought with our own money a Delta 2 Max extra battery and the alternator DC charge hub. This video is not sponsored. So why did we choose the EcoFlow ecosystem? Well, if you'd come around to my house, you'd see I've got a massive inverter charger from Victron on the wall with all my solar panels powering my house. Um, big fans of other companies like Mastervolt. However, on a boat, especially a relatively light displacement boat like our catamaran, we wanted to keep the weight down. We also wanted to minimize the amount of additional space that we used on the boat. So it's unusual, but in the Delta II Max, it's a bit of a sweet spot. You get quite a lot in a fairly small package. First of all, you get a 2000 kilowatt hour battery, and we've expanded that with the extra battery up to four kilowatts. It's got an inverter capable of running at 2400 watts continuously. It's got an MPPT solar controller, which will allow you to have two lots of 500 watts, 15 amps running into the unit so we can put solar on the roof. It's LFP batteries, so they're good for, it claims about 3000 cycles, so about 10 years of regular use. From a double company with a five year warranty um, and good support. I've been chatting to them on Facebook, getting very good feedback. So how much does the system cost? Well, at the moment, an EcoFlow's pricing is far from transparent. They have lots of sales. But if you were to buy the Delta II Max with the extra smart battery to give you the four kilowatts in total, that would be about two and a half in pounds. And then the alternator charger is on sale at the moment at 329. So that's about 2,800 pounds. So let's look at how it's configured. The shore power normally feeds directly through to the consumer unit, which powers the sockets, the water heaters, etc. But we've installed a transfer switch that lets you switch from shore power to the mains output, the AC output of the EcoFlow. As you can see, there's also DC input into the EcoFlow. And really interestingly, a link between the EcoFlow DC and the house batteries. And that can either flow from the four kilowatt hour EcoFlow into the house batteries, very useful if it's being topped up, for example, with solar and you're not running the engines. Or if you've been running the engines lots, you can flow from the house batteries into the EcoFlow. So what does that look like as a schematic? As you can see, the shore power feeds into the transfer switch but it also feeds directly to the AC input of the Delta II Max. The output of the Delta II Max goes back to the transfer switch to feed into the consumer unit. Now we're only powering the sockets in the hulls and in the main cabin. We're not powering the water heater or obviously the inverter charger. The Delta II Max is also connected to an extra battery and it's connected to the alternator charger that can do either charging from the Delta II Max into the house batteries or when the engine's running from the house batteries effectively from the alternator into the Delta II Max. We're also going to be adding um, 1000 watts of solar that will feed directly into the MPPTs of the Delta II Max. Um, so first of all, it starts out in this cupboard which is normally fed from shore power. And without shore power, um, you, you wouldn't get any power through to this distribution block. Um, it controls things like the battery charger, the heater, and the plugs in the main salon. So down here, we have fitted a diverter. So if I switch that to off, we'll lose power on the distribution board. Um, at the moment, I've got the mains disconnected. So if I turn it to shore power, still nothing. But if I flip over to the EcoFlow 
battery bank that is now powering the port and starboard sockets. I've chosen not to power the water heater, the battery charger, um, because this is for essential services. So literally all we've done is diverted the incoming main supply to the distribution board through the diverter switch and that then flows into and out of the EcoFlow system. So we'll just pop and have a look in there. So there, that socket is mains coming in from shore power. Um, as I say, it's turned off at the moment. Our main EcoFlow Delta 2 Max, you can just about see the screen on that showing its current state. Um, a second box here is the EcoFlow add-on battery. Um, again, there's a little screen, but we don't we don't use it. Um, so the Delta 2 Max is it's quite a sweet spot. It has a two kilowatt battery and a 2.4 kilowatt inverter, and can take approximately one kilowatt of solar. Um, I'll come to solar again later on. And then it has an additional two kilowatt battery. So we've got four kilowatt hours of power. Now what makes this installation a little bit unusual is this black box screwed down onto the, um, the wood just down there. Now that connects into the Delta 2 Max and it has a very thick cable. I don't think you can see it. It's the braided cable that's folded up between the batteries connected via a fuse to our main battery bank and that gives us the ability to do some quite interesting um, things. So what I'm going to do now is I'll stop the video and I'll go into the app and I'll show you some of the different functions. So here we are looking at the EcoFlow app. And the first thing we can do is go into the Delta 2 Max. You can see its state of charge um, and you can see its extra battery. So you can see how many hours of this load. Um, there's nothing running at the moment apart from the AC inverter. Now it's worth noting that the AC inverter just left on will use about a kilowatt a day just, just running. So it's worth flipping that off when not in use. Um, if I now turn on a kettle, um, we're using some of the DC and as you see, we're using 2.1 kilowatts going out um, into, into the boat's electrical system. Just turn the kettle back off. And there we are, we're now back with, with no load. And as I say, it's very easy just to flip the inverter off and that uses virtually no power. Interestingly when you're on shore power you can leave the inverter on because it goes into a bypass mode where it only uses about um, I think it only uses about um, 10 watts uh, but for now we'll flip that back on. So that's it's normal if you're out and about cruising you've got AC power to run the toaster, run the kettle, run the air fryer, run the induction hob um, and yeah, quite useful. If I just turn that kettle back on again, it'll give us an estimate as to how long that's going to last. So it says we've got 54 minutes if that kettle were just continuously using two kilowatts. And the extra battery says about one hour, 42 minutes at that load. So interestingly, uh, we found that you can be out and about with the toaster, with the kettle, with the air fryer um, and um, get away with a nice day or two sailing um, before you even come to come to solar. But now let's look at something a little bit more interesting and that is the alternator charger. It's really badly named because it's more of a DC hub. It's got three functions. The first function is you can charge your leisure batteries. So. Let's just confirm that's what we want to do. And it will now start to put power out of the EcoFlow into our leisure batteries. So as you can see there, we've got 204 watts leaving the EcoFlow and powering into 
the leisure batteries, which is quite useful, especially um, if you've got solar and your leisure batteries are, are running down, then you can top them up. Um, quite the opposite, you can charge your EcoFlow um, and in order to do that, I'm going to need to start the engines. So here we go, as you might be able to hear, we've started the starboard engine. And I've been quite conservative because there's not huge, massive alternators on the Yanmar engines. I've set it just to put 200 watts into the EcoFlow. So the alternator's running, it's making 13.7 volts, 13.8 um, volts, and it's putting in 200 watts. So it's saying that the recharge time would be about 10 hours. So just to give you a, an idea, and I'll turn the engines off. So the engine's now stopped and that's going to keep charging until that um, voltage drops um, and you can, you can set that in the configuration. So I don't want to deplete my house battery so I'll stop that. So in the settings you can say when you want that um, charging to start. So I've set it to 13 volts. So whenever there's more than 13 volts and ask it to charge the EcoFlow, it is going to going to charge the EcoFlow. And then the last option is battery maintenance, which effectively just uses the EcoFlow to kind of trickle charge the house batteries. Um, it will just very gently, won't keep them, um, won't pump power into them at a high rate, but it will just just kind of keep them ticking over, which is again quite nice if you've got solar, leaving your boat for um, a month or so, and what you can then do is not have to be plugged into the shore to run your your charger for your house batteries. You can just leave the um, EcoFlow in maintenance mode, and that will look after your lead acid uh, house battery bank. Um, or, as I say, you can go into charge mode, sorry, reverse charge mode, where it pumps power from the EcoFlow into the um, house bank at, at quite a high rate of watts, um, topping that up and kind of compensating for your autopilot or whatever you've got um, draining the system. Now you'll notice there's a solar um, just here, naught watts um, and that's because we don't have solar currently connected but the plan is um, to link one kilowatt of solar into the EcoFlow. It has two inputs for solar both 500 watts but they have a restriction of 15 amps and um, around 60 volts so you need to be quite careful in choosing your panels and I'll um, show you which panels we've chosen. Um, but just before I do that, I'm just going to pop the um, main shore power back on and you'll see what that does to the um, EcoFlow. Won't be a sec. So that's the mains power turned back on. And as you'll see, we've got, um, it, it'll ramp up slowly, but currently 500 watts and, and rising going into not only the EcoFlow, but also its extra battery. So we can see there, we're now talking about uh, um, one hour, 23 minutes. Now it can charge at a higher rate than that, but I like to not stress the boat system. So rather than charging at the full two kilowatts, I've set it to charge around one kilowatt um, so that it's not putting any any significant load on the on the boat's electrical systems because it's quite unusual for something to pull two kilowatts for an hour or so solid um, you know all the wiring's correctly sized but it could start to warm up 
Um, whereas if we leave it at the one kilowatt, charges nice and quickly. It's going to be um, charged in one hour twenty three. Um, and interestingly, you can also in the EcoFlow set um, you know charging speed there at one thousand two hundred watts, which is what I've set. You can set the input um, to, to your amperage um, and device timeouts are all all pretty pretty easy to set up um, so yeah quite an interesting little system easy to use um, and I'll just um, cut across to a, a wiring diagram again and then talk a little bit about solar so that's it how we managed to drop in an EcoFlow Delta Max 2 extra battery and the alternator charger onto the boat the next plan is to get some SIGS thin film flexible high efficiency shade tolerant solar panels onto the roof to give us about a thousand watts of solar feeding into the EcoFlow and that will be in the next video. If you are interested in purchasing any EcoFlow products do look at the links in the description below. Any profits will go through to an independent lifeboat called Solent Rescue. Thanks for watching.